From San Diego, California, this is One Extraordinary Marriage Show. We're being busy is overdone, romancing is fun, and scheduling sex is taking the guesswork out of wondering when you're going to get some. I'm Tony DeLorenzo, your co-host, along with my beautiful wife, Elisa. From coast to coast and around the world, thank you for joining us. It's time to talk sex, love, and commitment. Give us a call on the Hug Hotline at 858-876-5663 or send us an email to hugs at oneextraordinarymarriage.com. In today's show, we discuss the bodily functions that regularly occur in your body, as well as those that happen with your spouse. And there's a quote that says, never trust a girl who doesn't fart. You don't know what <laughs> else she's holding back from you. Uh, I little, like that one. Little little chuckle for the start of today's show. But, Why not? But as we're talking about bodily functions, I just thought it was very, very appropriate. And you know, we're going to be talking about those bodily functions mm -hmm. in today's show and how that impacts the intimacy that the two of you have and, and share some interesting numbers from the one family. Yes. But we start each show with a hug. And this week's hug is sponsored by Casper. And Casper is a truly fantastic brand that helps you get a great night's sleep. And you know, we think that what happens in the bedroom is pretty important important. So sure we're do. looking forward to sharing more about them later in the show. And this hug comes from an email that we recently received and it says, thank you. I recently found your podcast and it has been the encouragement that I need. My husband and I started dating when we were 18 and after five years got married. Mm -hmm. Six years into our marriage, we moved away from our home to the other side of the world. So my husband could follow his calling to be a preacher. Mm. Our marriage started with living with my in-laws before heading on our big adventure. We were less than six months out of university, six months into our marriage. And as a note, we've never lived alone, just the two of us. And after the first two months, we were in a new country. Wow. I started to resent my husband. I didn't know what my purpose was. The church needed my husband. And although I went with him in everything, it was his job, not mine, which led to bitterness and depression. I missed my family. I missed everything that I knew. And I was doing nothing but sitting around and sulking. Mm. I knew I had a problem, but I didn't have the push. I didn't want anybody to know that I was having these feelings. Your podcast, though, has given me the push to challenge myself, and I refuse to dampen my marriage with unnecessary resentment, which I had been throwing in the face of my husband. Because in all realness, this was a decision that I had agreed to, the lifestyle that I wanted. I'm slowly working through your podcast and love the uplifting messages of forgiveness and intimacy. Mm. I'm so blessed I found a source that has supported me in my days of weakness so I can work for the marriage I want between God, my husband, and myself. It's really the little things. Thank you. Oh, I love it. You are so very welcome, and we are honored and, and blessed to have you and your husband part of the one family and what you guys are doing mm -hmm. out there, you know. Reaching, reaching souls, reaching lives. Absolutely. And, and realizing, you know, one of the things I think that I take away from this message is, you know, she realized that she needed to do something herself, mm -hmm. that, that, you know, the seeds of bitterness and resentment were growing and, you know, just taking this action to say, you know what, they've got no place in my marriage. And what's, what's our hashtag been for this entire year? What can I do? Mm -hmm. Don't look at your spouse right now. Don't look at some other outside factor. Don't look at everything else that's going on. What's the one simple thing? What's the one thing you can do right now to make an adjustment in your life and in your marriage? So true. So good. So it's you know, as we transition now into the show, you know, Tony said at the top that we're going to be talking about bodily functions. And, you know, we often get asked where, like, how do you guys think of all these different topics? Do you ever run out of topics? And the truth of the matter is, is that I don't know in eight and a half years that we've run out of topics. Obviously, we're still here behind the mics every day. Uh, but the truth is, is that sometimes show ideas come out of the most unlikely places. Sure. And this is one of those show ideas that literally... Uh, started in our bathroom mm -hmm. with the door to the toilet open, right? I mean, like, I just, I'm painting a picture because I think it's important that you guys kind of get a concept that, that you can find inspiration for your marriage. You can find inspiration for conversations literally anywhere. Yeah, if you're willing to go there. Yeah, if you're willing to go here. <laughs> and so just as a heads up, though, when she says the, the, the uh, door to our bathroom, bathroom was open. We have an open concept bathroom, which I do not like personally. It's what it is, but there is a door that is for the toilet mm -hmm. and it, the door honestly to get in the toilet closet area is very small. And so to actually even shut the door, you know, you got to sort of squeeze yourself around to shut the door. It's one of those, just so you get an idea of what the bathroom looks like. And the truth of the matter is, is that I find that unnecessary. Like, 99% of the time. 
what unnecessary to shut the door right where i am more of the you know what honey shut the door right it's it's okay you, like even though it's a pain in the butt to shut the door because it is cl- because it is tight shut the door so funny you know this is this is going to be one of those shows that definitely has a little bit of humor yeah. in it uh but really you know, so often we get into these conversations because here we are, you know, like Tony, I'm literally going to the bathroom and Tony walks in and he does this, babe, just shut the door, right? Like, like it's not that hard. It takes you an extra, you know, four seconds, shut the door. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I, 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 it doesn't bother me. I mean, maybe because I've had kids, maybe, I, I don't know. I just don't feel it's necessary. And so we got to having this conversation still with the bathroom door open, mm-hmm. the toilet door open, I guess we should say, since we have that open concept i didn't even know open concept bathroom i don't think i don't think it is a thing but that's the only thing that came to mind when i thought when i was thinking about you know when you when we're watching like hgtv and people are always like they want an open concept yeah well our bathroom is open concept basically there's no door into the whole like master bath area the only door uh, you know so open tub open shower the only door is on the toilet yeah right and you know got us to thinking like you know as you you start off as two strangers, right? When you meet whoever your spouse is. I mean, even if you've known each other forever, at some point in time, you were strangers, right? And so you go from this place of being complete strangers to this place where maybe you do leave the bathroom door open. You know, where does that comfort level come in, you know, where you're farting, you're passing gas next to each other, whether it's in bed or, or you know, sitting on the couch together. Burping. I mean, urinating. These are bodily functions. Urinating, pooping. All of, hey, I mean, we're we're gonna go into this because there are sights and sounds that happen in marriage that we are so blessed to be a part of, and yet, who's talking about that? And how does it really, honestly, impact your marriage? Absolutely. Because I think there are sights and sounds we see sometimes that can throw us off from being sexually intimate, mm-hmm. emotionally intimate, uh, truly. And yet, these are things that we deal with on a day-to-day basis. Well, I wasn't even going to bring this up, but you want to share our first year of marriage? Do you remember? Um, you remember Fourth of July, our first year? <laughs> I, I do. Speaking remember. of bodily functions, I and, do remember and, that. You know, yeah, killing the intimacy, killing it. Yeah, I killed it quickly. So I ended up getting food poisoning middle of July. We're living at this point in time in Palm Desert. Uh, California. It is hot. I mean, it was probably one of the hottest summers I can remember. And I grew up down that way. So it was probably pushing 115, 120. Humidity was high this summer. Elise and I made very little money. We did not put on our AC. I mean, it was absolutely ridiculous what we were doing. And back in the day, we could have probably afforded AC compared to what they're charging us now. But anyways, I got deathly ill from food poisoning. We go to the I think at the time there was only emergency rooms. I don't remember an urgent care back yeah. then, but it must have been an emergency room or something. It was 4th of July, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Or the day before. It was the 4th of July. And so funny, the doctor comes in and goes, okay, this is what's going on. Let's get some liquids in you. And he looks at Elisa and goes, you you will need to administer the suppository. I did not sign up for this. <laughs> And I didn't even know what a suppository was. So I'm sitting there ill, like looking at the doctor going, well, what's that? And he goes, you know, it's a, what would, I mean, it's. Basically it was a, a, you know, a capsule. It was medication that was, had to be inserted anally. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, "Mm." like he can just keep puking his guts out. Like I just, this is this whole sickness and health thing. I didn't really think it was going to start so soon because we'd been married maybe eight, nine months at that point in time. Yeah. Right. We were. And, and and so, you know, it's so funny looking back because we, we just celebrated our 22nd anniversary and that's not been the only time. Like I wish I could say, oh, well, you know, we got it all out of our system in the first year. But bodily functions have a way of sticking with you your entire life. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's not just those nights where, you know, somebody has got the stomach flu or food poisoning. It's, you know, it's the day to day stuff the as well. Stuff. I mean, again, the burping, the farting, even even like the, the stomach grumbling, you, you know, things of that nature. Those are bodily functions that sometimes we're, you're, you're sitting there and you're like, uh, well, sometimes you know, we're having sex and like my stomach will seriously let off this gurgle that I actually I just find funny. Mm hmm. Because it's such a disruption. Yeah. Or, you know, maybe your head is on his stomach area or watching a movie and, and, you know, guys, you're just sitting there and you're just going about your day and you don't feel like anything's wrong or, and all of a sudden it's just like this, and you're like, uh, okay, that 
Not sure where that came from. But those are the those are some of the many bodily functions. And, and you know, it, it led us to start asking this question, you know, when does that change happen from being strangers? Because a lot of people, even at the beginning of their relationship, don't like they won't share any of those bodily functions with mm-hmm. the person that they'll end up marrying, right? Like I'm going to excuse myself to go fart or I'm going to, you know, stifle a burp or I'm definitely going to shut the bathroom door because heaven forbid you should walk in and see me, you know, going to the bathroom, right? And then, Which as you guys all understand now is no big deal to Elisa. For some, right? it is. Like I, I just, I simply feel like we're so comfortable with each other that it doesn't bother me. And yet it was interesting, you know, as we're going to talk about in the show, like, does it change how the two of you relate to one another when mm-hmm. you have all of this, uh, for lack of a better word, this familiarity, right? Does does it change how you view your spouse? Does it change the level of intimacy? And we actually did a survey this past week on Instagram. And if you don't follow us, come and join us over there. We're always putting up, you know, obviously we've got all of our fun marriage quotes, but from time to time, we're going to do these surveys because we want to know what the one family thinks about things. We want to know what you guys do because it's not enough for for me to get on Google and find some random survey that says, oh, well, you know, 500 people said this Mm -hmm. because we know that you as part of the one family, you that tune into the show, you that say, you know what, this is the kind of marriage I want to have. We know that sometimes you think a little differently, right? And that's a good thing because you're being intentional about your marriage. But we had almost 1,100 respondents Mm -hmm. to these three or four questions that we put up on Instagram. And it was really interesting because, you know, the questions that we asked, the first one was, when will you pass gas in front of your spouse? Right? And that could be burping, farting, any combination thereof. And 71% said, yeah, all the time. 29% said, no way. Right? So you got roughly 300 people that are like, not on your life. Mm -hmm. And 71, 710-ish a little bit more that said, yeah, you know, if I got a, if I got extra air, I'm just going to let it fly. Right? So the next question we ask is, you know, do you close the door when you go to the bathroom? Because hence where this whole show originated from, we were wondering on ourselves. Right. And, you know, 52% said yes and 48% said no. What was the yes part again? The yes was yes, I do close the door when I yes, go to the bathroom. Cl- okay. So, so that's on the majority. Right. But very, but very slim, slim. Mm-hmm. right? Like, you know, I mean, obviously margin of error, all that yeah. kind of good stuff. And then the final question we asked is, do you, do you shower together? Mm-hmm. Right. Cause that's another place. Like sometimes showering is sexual, right? Like mm-hmm. it can be a great place to be physically, sexually intimate. And sometimes you're just like, like washing off the day's grime. Mm -hmm. right? Cleaning your armpits, cleaning all over, you know, all of your genitals, all that kind of stuff. So it's just like, it's all hanging out. Mm -hmm. And 45% said, oh yes, we do shower together. And 50, 55% said not often. Mm -hmm. Right. And so it's interesting, you know, that like, yeah, we're definitely, definitely, definitely as a community free to like pass gas, burp fart in front of each other. But the other ones, you know, are we going to keep that bathroom door open? Are we going to shower together? almost in that 50 50 range Mm -hmm. a little bit less and so you know it's the questions behind this like why and and what's behind that and does it change how you view your spouse Mm -hmm. and obviously you know tony and i've shared i keep the bathroom door open he doesn't right so so we're in that like even in the middle of night if i gotta go up and just to go pee in the middle of the night i will shut the door most of the time that's like like to me, that just seems like such a waste of energy. I, I know it does. And some other things, I just wanted to bring up some other things though, when it comes to just bodily functions or even sounds that we hear. You know what I mean? Right now, Lisa and I have been dealing with a nasty cold at times and it just isn't wanting to go to go away. So, I mean, I think about, you know, blowing your nose, hawking up loogies. I mean, just like you're coughing. Literally, right before we got on the air, you guys, he's in the kitchen and, and he just like a big old one. And I'm like, oh... But that those are sound? those those are those bodily functions and sounds that we hear that I, I you know how do we think about that in the terms of our marriage and how do we overcome those two I, and I'm not going to say we know all the answers but when it comes to that sexual play like getting away from that because hey man I've seen you throw up I've seen you be at, at your worst when you've had the flu and, and vice versa. And for us, and even monthly, I mean, you have your period every month and there's, you know, you're flushing all that stuff up and, or out, <laughs> not, up, not out. up, out. But yeah, I mean, then you've got tampons and, or pads and, you know, you, so you've got all of these things that are just a part of life. And 
And what does it do? And it was interesting because I was doing some, I did do that research to say, okay, you know, what are people saying about this? Right? How does it impact your, specifically your sexual intimacy? Mm -hmm. Or does it? Right. And there were, it was, I found two different camps that talked about this. The one camp was the, you know, it's too familiar. Right. So be, when you see all of this stuff, when you leave the bathroom door open, when you fart in front of each other, when you like shower together and you're cleaning all your body parts, it makes it too familiar. And so you lose you lose that sense of mystery, that sense of, you know, my spouse is a separate person because like you you've seen everything. Mm -hmm. Well, I would say, though, any of us who have had children and have been in that labor and delivery room, I mean, we've seen everything. Yeah, I, I Everybody's mean, seen everything at that point in time. Yeah. I mean, that's. I mean, but I think that's true. And if, even if a couple hasn't had kids, right. You know, like if, if you've gone through food poisoning sure. or the flu, Oh yeah. That, or, I mean, you know, that incident with your spouse. Yeah. I mean, that like, incident with us, you know, first year of marriage. I mean, yeah, you seen it, you saw everything pretty quick. Yeah. I mean, uh, like, you know, but so that there's that too familiar camp, mm -hmm. right. Yeah. That says, you know, it kind of like takes the novelty off. Of, of your intimacy. It's just kind of like, oh, well, I've seen it all. You know, there's nothing there. And then there's, there's the other camp that says, okay, I'm so comfortable with you, right? Like we're so comfortable with one another that we can actually, because we have that comfort level of seeing everything, it, it actually allows us more freedom to explore our bodies, to, to mm -hmm. be comfortable with one another. And so it was really interesting to see that, that we could be talking about the exact same thing right? Bodily functions, being literally wide open with one another and have these two, you know, very oppositional mindsets. And, and, you know, it got, for me, it led to what does this look like in marriage? Sure. Because I think a lot of times, you know, it's kind of like Tony, I even talking about the bathroom door, like Tony's like, shut the bathroom door. I'm like, I don't care. And so how does that, how does that impact how the two of us see each other sexually? How does it impact the two of you and how you see each other sexually. Because when it comes right down to it, whether you're in the too familiar camp and like it's taken the mystery off or you're in the, you know, we now know everything, let's go there. There is an impact on how the two of you approach your sexual intimacy. And we want to talk about, about how to really foster comfort, mm -hmm. you know, and just awareness and, and those conversations. Because guys, like I said at the beginning, your bodily functions, as long as you are living, you're going to have bodily functions that, that are going to you know, impact your intimacy with your, with your spouse. I mean, mm -hmm. that's just like, if you're living, you got bodily functions, period, end of story. And you know, we want to, we want to jump into that. But before we do, we just want to thank this week's sponsor. And I mentioned at the, the top of the show that Casper is just this fantastic brand that allows you to get a great night's sleep because they care so much about the quality of their products and the fact that a good night's sleep really does impact everything that you do. Sure does. You know, the original Casper mattress, they were so intentional about having these multiple supportive memory foams so that you get both the right amount of sync and the right amount of bounce. And I got to tell you, you know, when I'm sleeping, I want, you know, the sink, I want to be comfortable. But when we're having sex, I like having the bounce. Yeah, right? I agree. You know, that matters. And it's not just, it's not just the mattress. They offer a wide array of other products like pillows and sheets so that you get the whole sleep experience. It's not just like, here's a great mattress. And all of their products are designed, developed and assembled right here in the United States. And here's the thing. They have over 20,000 reviews and an average of 4.8 stars across Casper, Amazon and Google. They're so quickly becoming the internet's favorite mattress. And you can be sure of your purchase with Casper's 100 night. Think about that. You get 100 nights to try this risk-free sleep on it trial. So get $50 towards select mattresses by visiting casper.com slash OEM and using OEM at checkout. Terms and conditions apply. So like I said, you know, some of you are in the too familiar camp. Some of you are in the, well, let's just, you know, go and explore. And, and I was going to just say real quick there, th those are the two camps, right, that Elisa mm -hmm. shared. So first and foremost, before we go to this next spot, which camp are you in? And you probably already know as we were talking, you, you were you were probably just going, oh, that's that's me, that's me, or that's my spouse. So you already know your camp. So make sure that as as we're sharing, you just you just soak in where you are and also understand where your spouse is as well. 
Absolutely. And, you know, have a conversation about this. I, I was laughing as we were preparing the show because I'm like, who talks about burping and farting in marriage? Who talks about leaving the bathroom door open? And Tony just looked at me and goes, we do. Hey, you know, other, other bodily functions, earwax. I mean, that's, that's yeah. another one. I like mean, th- you said, blowing your nose, throwing up. I mean, you know. Is snoring considered a bodily function? I wonder. Mm, I think we could call it one. It's, it's ju- our show. We can call it whatever we want. You want well, to call it? I'm, ju- I'm just wondering, you know, by like the the letter of what bodily functions are. I, I didn't actually. Yeah, I'm just wondering if that is one that. though. Okay, but your body's doing it, so mm-hmm. I would say yes. Technically, that would fall into it, and, and it's important to sit down and say, you know what? Let's have a conversation about this, right? Because you may have never thought, oh, well, this is you know, like when you leave the bathroom door open, that bothers me. Or I don't care that you leave the bathroom door open because I'm going to leave the bathroom door open. My, you know, like whatever that is. But here's the thing. When we don't. <laughs> and, and Elisa's saying, like, we could have this conversation and say it bothers me because I've had this conversation with Elisa right here on the air that it bothers me. Guess what? It's not going to change. She's not going to all of a sudden. And this is just truthful, you guys. She's not all of a sudden just going to change and be like, oh, OK, well, that's that bothers you, Tony. So I'm going to just shut the door every single time. It's not. And. For me personally, it's not something that I am going to go and get so overboard on and crazy about that it's going to that it's going to tweak our marriage. Mm-hmm. I may make a suggestion here and there and just, you know, hey, if you're sitting there peeing, eh, okay, that's one thing. If you're sitting there pooping, honey, j- just shut the door. It, it's, right. it's okay. Apparently there's a distinction, which just cracks me up because as a woman, like I'm sitting on the toilet regardless. And I think the distinction for me is like, when we used to go hiking and backpacking a lot, okay. to go pee was just no big deal. I mean, you would step off the trail a couple of feet and you just go pee on a tree. Mm-hmm. I mean, you would even do it. You'd pull up your skirt, you know, just scurry a little bit. Yeah, and then even pooping though, when we would hike, it's more like, hey, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go. It's up, a production. Yeah, I'm gonna go up the hill a little bit, dig my hole or put it in my bag. So I think there's just that little bit for myself. But what I'm saying is you may have the conversation and it may not change your spouse. I don't think the conversation Elise and I are having about this is honestly going to change her. Am I still going to love her and adore her and everything? Sure. It's one of those little quirks in our marriage that we got to work through. Well, and then that's what I was going to say. You know, you can have this conversation. It doesn't necessarily mean that things are going to change, but that it's it's this place where you, you just start to open up the dialogue around it. Mm-hmm. Right. You open up like we were we were sharing that we were going to do this show with a friend. And you know, she was telling us that she's like her husband told her very early on. Like, I don't care if you see me pee, but you will never, capital, bold, like neon lights, you will never see me take a poop. Yep. Like that was just a line that he had, you know, he had determined. And and so it's all good. She just knows that that's never going to happen and it's all fine. Yeah. And that that may be the same. That may be the same thing in your marriage, but it's time to have those conversations if this is an issue or if this is something that like you're listening to this and you're like, huh, I never thought about it, but yeah, I kind of do feel one way. Like, I feel like maybe this does make it too familiar, right? So, you know, even for me hearing, you know, again, sometimes you just got to repeat this stuff to your spouse because sometimes they need to hear it, you know, five, 10, 25 times. Don't worry about it. Just keep talking to them. Don't get angry. Just keep talking, right? To to hear that. Not, not, not not, when she says keep talking, don't, don't go for endlessly. I mean, at different times you hear it and you bring it up and you discuss it at different points and at different places. Oh, thank you for that clarification. Yeah. yeah, don't. yeah, yeah. D- don't just keep talking for five hours about it. But, but get into this place where you can have these conversations, guys. Get this way. Like, what does it look like? How do I, you know, how do we feel? Are we in the, the, it's too familiar camp? Or are we in the, you know what, because I've seen you do all this, like, I feel like we're in this place of freedom where we can explore each other's bodies. Mm-hmm. But guys, if we're not having the conversation around this topic, like so many of the other topics that we bring here on the One Extraordinary Marriage Show, is there a level of intimacy that you're missing in your marriage? Right? Is there Good something question. that's maybe holding you back because you feel like you've seen everything and you're like, can we just have a little mystery in our marriage? Right? Can, can you know, like the blow in the nose thing or the hog and loogie or, or, you know, like if you got to throw up or whatever, like whatever it is. And that's the tough part. And that's and I, and I said this at the top of the show. This is a tough part where I don't know if we, we can really answer all the questions here because there's this ebb and a flow. Like when Elisa's sick and she's throwing up, by all means, I'm going to be there for her. You know, I will be there for her. It, it's a tough situation at times, you know, because you, you start getting that gag reflex going. Um, 
it, but from that from that standpoint of okay, how do I get myself to that place? Once you're feeling better, you're you're, you're doing well, and we're going to get into our sexual intimacy. How do I have to think of you from that sexual standpoint? And not from this, oh my gosh, I just saw you at your lowest of lows. Mm -hmm. and, and for many of you have seen that. And, I, and again, I don't have the answers for myself. I, I honestly begin to have those visions and those pictures of Elisa at her like best, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? So I, I just, I take away the thought process of where we were at our worst and look at her from our best, um, and for my, myself, that just helps. That, that's that, that vision um, of beauty of just we're in a, and I don't want to say a perfect place, but I say that in quotes, like air quotes here, um, because it is. I mean, you, you, and then sometimes, like she'll say, like all of a sudden her stomach will go, start gurgling and it just like throws you off and you're going, oh, shoot. Okay, hold on, you know, because there's a little chuckle and we're laughing and, and you're like, okay, that happened. No big deal. Let's move on. And it's, it's having the conversation. What does this look like for us? Right. What is this area of our sexual and physical intimacy? What does that look like? And, and what do we need to create as a team? Yeah. You know, all this year and, and actually for a couple of years now, we talk about the two of you being a team and, and what does sharing bodily functions look like for team DeLorenzo, for team Smith, for team Jones, for team whoever, mm -hmm. right? There's nothing wrong with having a conversation about something that is so natural. The challenge in our marriages comes when we don't talk about the everyday things, when we don't talk about these little things, and then they just kind of become these little like nagging, so good, true, like nagging little things in the back of our head. Like you know, when somebody doesn't close the door and you're like grumbling about it, or when somebody like blows their nose, like Tony, like I said, he you know hocked a loogie in the kitchen, right in your know, kitchen sink. I mean, he did rinse it out, but it was in the kitchen sink right before we were getting on the air. And I'm like, ah, oh. but you know what? Who cares? He rinsed out the sink. It's not where I would have spit it out, but that's what he did. And I'm not going to let it, like we've made a decision that those things are not going to be a big deal in our marriage, mm -hmm. but that's a decision. And that's a conversation that the two of you need to have, because if it starts to be, for some of you, this show, you'll just kind of laugh and you're like, eh, this is not a big deal in our marriage. For others of you, it is a big deal. And if it is a big deal, then this is the week that you start having the conversation around it. Not to point fingers, not to blame, not to say, you better stop doing this or else, but to say, how do we, how do we craft this? And again, they are bodily functions that were given to us as, you know, we're created, as human beings, we're yeah. created this way. So there, there are those social stereotypes and the, the social, like what's it supposed to be and all this stuff. And, and in all honesty... Th these things happen. Mm -hmm. So let, let's get real with each other. First and foremost, get real with each other and be like, yeah, that happens. And, and then you have a plan for your marriage. What works for Tony and I may not work for the two of you. And that's fine. Come up with your own. Come up with your own. The reason that we do shows like this is because nobody that we know is having this conversation. And if we're having it, whether it's happening in our bathroom, our bedroom, or wherever, we know that if we're having it, then somebody in the one family needs to have this conversation. They need to hear that a couple can talk about this. Mm -hmm. And they need to say, okay, what, how do we craft this? How do we bring this conversation into our marriage to create the extraordinary? Right? It seems silly on the surface, you know, like burping, farting, keeping the bathroom door open, blowing your nose. But at the end of the day, every step that the two of you take towards becoming one, towards becoming that team, that strength together is one step closer to the extraordinary marriage that the two of you want to have. That's the whole reason we get behind these microphones every week is to get you one step closer to where you want to be in your marriage. Yeah. So, hey, it, 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 this, is, this is really an emotional intimacy topic. This is talking about those bodily functions. How do they work? How do we see them? Let's have fun with it. If, if it's for you, it's a serious topic. Hey, it is. Talk to your spouse about it. If it's something that you guys laugh about and have fun about, cool. Go with it. Either way, in our marriages, if you've been in, if you've been married more, I would say more than a week, you, you, you've probably experienced some of them with your spouse. Mm -hmm. And so talk about it. Let it out. Let, let each other, and I say let it out, and, and, and I mean that vocalizing it 
so that you guys both know where you are. And so at the end of the day, you guys are emotionally connected, you're sexually connected, and you guys can desire one, en- one another more than you had before. Go for it. Enjoy it. We love you guys. Have a fantastic week, and we'll catch you next week. Love you guys.